just uh, one point on our reading and then one on our gospel, if I may. Uh, so, in our reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, uh, there's this one particular line that always strikes me. I think this is uh, a beautiful indication of the kind of confidence that Peter and John have. So, keep in mind, this is still the very, very early days of the church, so there's still a sort of persecution of these followers of, of Jesus, um, Peter and uh, John are risking arrest, uh, flogging, they're risking uh, rejection, they're risking the ire of the scribes, Pharisees and authorities at the time when they're doing this. So this is, this is much more poignant than it seems. This is right at the beginning, well this is the third chapter of the uh, Acts of the Apostles, so still very early uh, in the, the whole development of the church. Okay, so they're going to this uh, going to the temple and they see this man begging and they want to help him but they want to give him something more than more than just give him some food or give him some money or something like that they want to they want him healed right but it, it, the way the whole thing goes on is, is is beautiful look at us they said he looks at them expectantly hoping to get something from them so he would have turned to them probably with the handout or the begging bowl or whatever it was, you know, hoping to get something. Lovely, excellent, I'm going to get something. But then Peter says, silver or gold I have not, but what I give you, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, the Nazarene, walk. I think this is just an absolutely fantastic attitude for the whole church, right? For us as a church, we don't have power and influence because we have money or property or Things like that, that'll just pass. Money is not important. Money is not what, what gives the, the, the church credence or money is it's necessary to pay the bills and the secretaries and, and whoever else and the old bit of tax and the, the, the oil bills. Okay, it's necessary, yes. But that's not where our authority or our influence comes from, right? Silver or gold, I have not. But what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, walk. I remember hearing a, a couple of months ago, actually, this, an expression that I, 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 I loved. Um, a priest said, you know, people came to me looking for Jesus, and I gave them me. They came looking for God, and I just gave them myself. Do you know, because it, it can happen in ministry, in prayer groups, pilgrimages uh, within the church, that uh, people are looking for God, and we can kind of enjoy the fact that people are coming. They're looking for God. Hey, I'm here too. Uh, and then just without realizing it, you start actually giving them yourself. You, know, you want to kind of please them rather than just direct them to God and get out of the way. Uh, this happens all the time. Whenever you know, there's a temptation within priests or bishops or that, to, to preach what's simply just what's popular, what's, what will go down well, what's palatable. Uh, so rather than be faithful to the Lord, we want popularity. That can happen. And this, this gospel just reminds us that as, especially as priests uh, and bishops, we are called to witness to Christ above everything and anything. Silver and gold I have not. We're not trying to win you because we're smart or, or we've studied philosophy or theology or whatever. All these things that are necessary to understand what, what, get a deeper sense of scripture that, but ultimately what people come to us for and what we must give them is God, is Jesus. Otherwise, we're actually an obstacle. We're actually getting in the way. When you think about it, like people coming to us looking for God and we actually get in the way of that and give them ourselves. That's, it's a tragedy. That's, that's, that's horrific. So the healing is granted and the, the, the guy obviously, again, understood this, this healing in the right way. He praises God. Not just, not so, so you see, like, the priests then, the, or bishops in this case, uh, Peter and John, they draw from God, give to man. And then man is supposed to thank God. So everything is supposed to be deo, deocentric, God-centered. If Peter and John said, I'm going to heal you, and then heal the man, and then the man thank Peter and John, and it stays there, that's anthropocentric, that's, that's man-centered. That's, that's not what we're about. It's not about them just thanking Peter and John and then end of story. Now, then you've missed the whole point. The whole point is that your heavenly father wants to heal you. He does so through, through the action of Jesus, through the action of, of Peter and John. Okay, so uh, this is the way 
the, the life the church is supposed to be. We give something that's not ours. We give some, something that passes through us that we didn't earn or merit. The graces of, of the Holy Eucharist, the graces of absolution, uh, these didn't come from the priest. They come through the priest. They come from heaven. They come from God. And then in return, we should be thankful and grateful to God in heaven. So it doesn't, it never, we never stay stuck on the minister. That's, that's, that's just, could actually be idolatry. So, okay. Uh, one point on the uh, gospel, if I may. So the road to Amos. So on the road to Amos, uh, we have this wonderfully kind of ordinary scene, if you will. These two uh, disciples of Jesus walking on the road. Jesus comes up and says, it's, it's so informal. It's so natural. It's so kind of normal. Um, he just walks up. He's just walking along by their side and says, hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> this is Jesus. Like This is God, right? And he's walking along. With, hey, guys, what, what's, what, what are you chatting about? How, how are things? And it's like, you must be, uh, well, we're, t- we're just talking about everything that has happened in Jerusalem, you know, all these things these last few days. What things? <laughs> Jesus asking, sorry, Jesus asking what happened in Jerusalem. I think Jesus was fairly familiar with what happened in Jerusalem over those last few days. He was kind of at the center of it all. But anyway, so he lets them talk. All right, and then uh, they recognize him in, in the breaking of the bread. But before that, we have kind of, it's like a mini version of the Mass, okay? So he explains in the scriptures, all the scriptures from the Old Testament that were about him starting with Moses, going through the prophets, okay? So this is like the liturgy of the word, what we're doing now, uh, scripture. So the first part of this almost liturgy, if you will, with the, the disciples on the road to Amos is the liturgy of the word, okay? So understanding, delving into scripture and seeing how scripture ties in with this, the, 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 the message of Jesus, the mission of Jesus, okay? And then when uh, they drew near the village, Jesus made as if to go on. Now, Jesus, we've, we've heard this expression before. Uh, this is when the apostles are out on the boat and Jesus is walking on water, right? And it says there, Jesus made as if to go on. So the, the disciples are in the boat. It's getting a wee bit stormy. And Jesus, you could just imagine he's walking and he gives the lads the bottom jaw. Oh, guys, are you getting on? And made, made, made as if to go on. Like he, he goes, pretend, not so much pretends, but he's going to keep moving unless he's invited, unless he's stopped. You know, Jesus, would, do you want to come in? Do you want to stay? It's like the absolute kind of, the humility of this, where this is, this is Jesus, right? He's just been through a crucifixion, right? It's been a fairly rough weekend. Uh, and now he, he makes, makes as if to go on, and then the disciples say, well, look, it's, it's getting dark. You know, the, the, the sun is about to set. Do you want to come in? Stay with us. And so he says, okay, but like, the point is like, he waits for the invitation. Now, when he does, what happens? Uh, while he was with them at table, he took bread and said the blessing, broke it, handed it to them. Their eyes were open and they recognized him. And then he vanishes from their sight. Okay, so what, again, what, 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 why, why do that and what does it mean? So he, he comes to them he, in the breaking of the bread. He comes to them in the Eucharist. And then he vanishes from their sight but he's still with them in the Eucharist. That's a message for us today. He's still with them in the Eucharist. He's not visibly there as a, uh, uh, we can't see his human nature, we can't see him, but he's still with them in the Eucharist. That's the second part of the Mass. Liturgy of the Word, Liturgy of the Eucharist. Liturgy of the Eucharist, where Jesus is still with us, but in the Eucharist. And then similarly to the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, it's not so much that Jesus makes as if to go on as in he's kind of running away from us, but he does wait <coughs> for our invitation. Jesus will appear validly. Jesus will transform or transubstantiate these, these gifts at every single Mass. But even when we used to be able to go to Mass, or when you used to be able to go to Mass easily, uh, the fact that the gifts are, are, are validly changed into Jesus doesn't necessarily mean that they bear fruit in you. The fruit bearing of the Eucharist, that depends on you. You can receive the Eucharist twice, three times a day and it can have absolutely zero effect on you. Or you can receive it once a week with great fervor and love and it can be a source, a wellspring 
of, of, of grace and love. That depends on us. Remember, every Eucharist is entirely Jesus. There isn't a, a, a more powerful Holy Communion, or if you get more, or if you get a bigger one, or if you get three in a day, every communion is entirely Jesus. So it has everything you need, everything. So the, the fruit that it bears depends on us. So here we have this, this beautiful teaching on, on the Mass in this Gospel. The disciples on the road to Emmaus, where they hear the Lord as such break open the Scriptures, the liturgy of the Word, and then break the bread, the liturgy of the Eucharist. He waits for their invitation to come into their hearts, and then their eyes are opened. So we pray for that eye-opening for all of us, that every time we celebrate Mass, and COVID will pass, we will get back to Mass at some point. And when we do, Lord, that our eyes may be opened to long for you, to see you, to hear you in your word, and to welcome you with great love in the Holy Eucharist. Amen.